Shavua Tov. We just learned of the passing of one of the greatest Jewish leaders, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs of Blessed Memory, who passed away on Shabbat at the age of 72 years old. Rabbi Sachs was one of the greatest rabbis, thinkers, lecturers, authors, and one of the greatest inspirations in Jewish life today. And surely his life and his legacy and his inspiration will carry on for generations. We were fortunate and blessed at Palm Beach Synagogue to have hosted him twice, once on Shabbat as a scholar in residence, and once actually on Thanksgiving, which is upcoming, where he gave a lecture in honor of Thanksgiving at the synagogue. In his memory, I would like to share a beautiful Dvar Torah that he gives on this week's Torah portion, Chaye Sarah. Rabbi Sachs, Sachs asks the question, why is it that Noah, although the Torah says he was a righteous man and he followed God and he found favor in the eyes of God, does not become a great Jewish leader, as opposed to Abraham who becomes the patriarch and the father of our great nation. And Rabbi Sachs points to this week's Torah portion. Noah, after the tragedy of the flood, comes out of the ark. And what does the Torah say? He plants a vineyard and he gets drunk. He does not know how to deal with loss with devastation, with tragedy. He just numbs himself with alcohol and he dr gets drunk and does not actively try to rebuild the shattered and destroyed world around him. Now we come to Abraham in this week's Torah portion. The end of yesterday's Torah reading was the story of the binding of Isaac, where Isaac was nearly sacrificed on the altar. God had summoned Abraham to give up his most beloved son and as Abraham raised the knife, the call came from heaven, do not touch the lad. It was a test. And now that God sees that you are so devoted and faithful, God will make your descendants like the stars in the heaven and the sand on the seashore. However, in this week's Parsha Chayesara, Abraham comes home and he discovers that his wife, Sarah, passed away. And our rabbis say that the shock of the news that Sarah learned that Abraham took their beloved son Isaac to be sacrificed caused her to die of shock. Today we would call it a heart attack. And Abraham realized that the binding of Isaac was not a victimless event, but indeed his beloved wife Sarah passed away. And the Torah says that Abraham returns home and it says, Lispod he eulogizes and weeps over his beloved wife Sarah the matriarch of the Jewish nation. But the ne very next verse says, Vayakam Avraham Meso, that after the funeral, Abraham rose up from the face of his beloved wife, from the grieving of his wife's loss. And what does he do? He does two things in this week's Torah portion, Chayisar, which secure the Jewish future. The first thing he does is he buys the cave of Machpelah, the first plot, the first piece of land purchased by the first Jew in the land of Israel. And the second thing he does in this week's Parsha is arrange for the marriage of his son Isaac to Rebekah, sending his servant Eliezer to find a wife, securing the Jewish future that his child Isaac will get married and have future generations. And these two events in this week's Parsha affect us till today as we continue to live in the land of Israel and we continue to live on as a Jewish nation all thanks to the two acts that Abraham performs in this week's Parsha, securing a purchase in the land of Israel and securing the Jewish future through having children, through arranging the marriage of Isaac and Rebekah. And here Rabbi Sachs says is the contrast. Noah doesn't act after his loss. Abraham mourns, weeps over his loss, but then from his grief he rises up, Vayakam Avraham, and says now it's time to secure the future. And this is the unique trait of the Jewish people. The Jewish people have suffered so many tragedies that other nations would have been wiped out, devastated by these losses. Starting with the, starting with the destruction of the first temple by the Babylonians and the second one by the Romans and the exiles and then all the expulsions and the pogroms and the massacres and the inquisitions and finally in our generation, the Holocaust, the Shoah. But we have the unique trait of Abraham. We grieve, we, law, we, we, we weep, we eulogize, we mourn, but we don't remain permanently in a state of grief. We rise up and we say, okay, now it's time to plan. Now it's time to prepare. Now it's time to plant the seeds for a brighter tomorrow, for a better future. 
This is the legacy of Abraham within each and every Jew, that when faced with adversity and challenge, we don't just grieve, but we rise up and we build a bright future. I want to share with you a story. Everyone knows the song from Simon and Garfunkel, The Sound of Silence. It starts with the famous lyrics, Hello, my dear friend. Darkness, I've come to speak with you again. And a memoir just was published by an individual by the name of Sandy Greenberg, who tells the story behind these lyrics. Hello, darkness, my dear friend, I've come to speak with you again. And the name of the book is After the Lyrics. And he says that when he was 19 years old, he was at Columbia University. And on the first week in New York at Columbia University, he met Arthur Art Garfunkel, and they became best friends. They became roommates, and they had a bond that was unbreakable, and they promised each other to always be there for each other as friends. Sadly, Sandy says, one day he was on the baseball field, and suddenly his eyesight became blurry and dark. He was taken to the doctor, and it was discovered that he has glaucoma, and it had destroyed his optic nerve, and within days he was completely blind. He came from a Jewish family, Sandy Greenberg in Buffalo, New York, and he went home to his parents, and he was depressed. He locked himself in his room, realizing that he would be blind for the rest of his life, with no hope of ever seeing. And he just wept into his pillow, thinking, what point is there to my life? How can I go on? His parents were poor immigrants, didn't have much money to help him. He would refuse to see or talk to anyone. One day, there's a knock on his door. And who is there? His friend, Art Garfunkel. And he said, I must speak with you. And he said, you're coming back to university, aren't you? And he says, no, I'm not. I'm dropping out. He says, you can't do that. You don't understand. I need you. We have a pact that will be there for each other. Come back to school. I will help you get through school. And finally, he convinced Sandy Greenberg to come back to Columbia. And Art Garfunkel took care of him. He walked him to class and back. When he fell, he bandaged his wounds. He even filled out his forms for him and would read to him the subject matters of the classes so he could take the tests and pass. But because he had so much empathy, Art Garfunkel, for his friend Sandy, he said he would call himself darkness. He said, I want to be with you in the place that you are in. And he would come to read to him and he would say, your friend darkness is here. And I've come to read to you. One day he took him to out to New York City uh, on walking the streets and they came to Grand Central Station. And suddenly Art Garfunkel said to his friend, Sandy, I got to run and do something. And he took off and left Sandy in the middle of Grand Central Station. He, he, uh, Sandy said he felt lost and he had to make his way back to the university. And he, with his hands stretched out, he walked through Grand Central Station, bumping into people, knocking things over, bruising himself. He was bleeding in his socks and his shins. And finally he got the train and made it back to Columbia. And he said it was the worst, most humiliating hours of his life. Suddenly on the campus, he bumped into someone and the man apologized and he recognized it was the voice of his friend, Art Garfunkel. And at first he was enraged. How did you abandon me? But then he realized, what had happened. Art deliberately left him behind because he realized unless he realized that he could do it on his own, he'll never live independently. And he said from that day, his life changed forever because he knew that he could live independently as a blind person. He went on to graduate Columbia University and then even went on to get master's degrees from Harvard and from Oxford. And he married his high school sweetheart and settled in the UK. A number of years later, his friend, Art Garfunkel called Sandy and he said, Sandy, I met this guy, his name is Paul Simon, and we started a little rock band and we want to publish our first record, but we need $400. Can you help me out? And Sandy Greenberg said he and his wife had $404 in their bank account, but without hesitation, he said, absolutely, you'll have the check for $400. He said this was his chance to pay back his friend for all of his love and kindness, to reciprocate that bond and that promise they made to each other. He sent him the $400 and the record that they produced, Simon and Garfunkel, their first record of 1964, was called Good Morning, It's 3 a.m. And it it was released and it became a colossal failure. However, there was one song on the recording, 
Hollow Darkness, My Old Friend, that was subsequently released the following year as a single, and it became the number one song worldwide, which led them to fame and multiple other recordings later. Some six decades later, Art Garfunkel and Sandy Greenberg are still best friends. And Sandy Greenberg went on not only to ha get married, but have three children. He became a prominent entrepreneur, inv investor, uh, even a presidential advisor and a philanthropist. And he actually created a $3 million reward for someone who could find the cure to blindness. And when you talk to Art Garfunkel, he says that this changed his life, this event, because he began to see himself in a new light as a person who is loyal and dedicated and will always be there for, their friend, for his friend. And Sandy Greenberg says, I am the luckiest man in the world to have a friend like Art Garfunkel. This is the story of two people who faced adversity, but instead of plunging into darkness and despair, they found love and friendship and camaraderie and empathy through darkness. And that's why Sandy Greenberg says this song, Hello Darkness, My Dear Friend, I've come to speak with you again, has such meaning to him because it speaks to his condition of darkness and how his friend was there for him at all times. This is a story not only of loving kindness and generosity, but of rebounding from adversity, like Abraham, who did not fall into the spear as Noah did, but built and secured the Jewish future. We as a Jewish people have that capacity. The loss of Rabbi Sachs is tragic at the age of 72, but his beauty, his writings, his teachings will inspire generations to come and we will continue to do what Rabbi Sachs always did, which is build a bright Jewish future.